Welcome to Nailed It Radio. Find your simplicity within your complexity with me, life coach, Carrie Nail. Are you a woman experiencing life transitions and who wants to be recognized for your whole potential? Join me and my co-host, Dr. Pat, as we discuss what it means to use your full power to be the best version of yourself. Imagine stepping into the energy of saying yes to yourself as we both have done. This hour is packed with tips and stories on what it means to become whole, to integrate into your true self and reframe your story in any given situation. Stay with us on this journey of self-discovery, powerful solutions, and unpacking the nature of who we are and why. You've already nailed your first step to your best self by tuning into this show. Now here are your hosts. This is a fabulous show, Nailed It Radio with Carrie Nail. Um, Here's what I want to say about what you're about to hear. You know, the journey that each of us gets to go on, and it doesn't matter what walk of life you're in or have. Um, I've had jobs cleaning homes, selling hot dogs, seriously, you name it. This show is for everyone because Carrie is going to take us on a journey of what confidence in you looks like. But more importantly, in the day and age we're living in right now, you know, our confidence has taken a little bit of a hit. Some of us, bigger hits than others. But what is it that you can learn from Carrie today about how to power up your confidence no matter what? Here's the thing. If you know who she is and you know what she does, you know that she works with people across the globe to not just help them fully understand the dynamic nature and their absolutely unlimited potential, but she puts you in the driver's seat of your life. And so working with Carrie is more than just let's get down to work. It's fun, it's energetic, insightful, and dynamic in nature because passionate about people is what she is. But more than that, helping people get unstuck, helping them imagine stepping into the energy of saying yes to yourself. And in these past couple of shows, she has demonstrated on how Carrie Nail walks the talk and nails it. Carrie, powerful show. Ready to get going here? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd like to start off the first segment because we're going to talk about what's the difference between confidence and authenticity, confidence and compassion, arrogance and courage. So I want to start with the authenticity. What's the difference between confidence and authenticity? And we're going to start with a quote by Deepak Chopra. And he says, we discover that our true identity is not connected to our socially derived identities and the constrictions and limitations that come with that. Every label we attach to ourselves only disguises our true unlimited balanced nature, our authentic self. And the definition of authenticity is be true to who you are personally, personality values and principles, know thyself. And I help people do that by using the Myers-Briggs type indicator personality preferences so people understand who they are at their core, what preferences they, what, what personality types they prefer, energy, um, how they see things, how they make decisions and how they adapt and live their outer life. And so and the do- definition of confidence is a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's own appreciation of one's own abilities and qualities. So how can you do that without knowing yourself first? And so when I was looking back at some of my uh, Facebook posts that I did around confidence. And I was talking about um, an impromptu swimming suit or the swimming party impromptu photo shoot. Um, I, I, as I was looking about at some of those comments on Facebook, cause I was asking people, what does confidence look like to you? And my sister-in-law said, confidence starts with loving yourself and I believe before you can love yourself, you know have to know who you are and who you are at your core. Um, and then at the, at the photo shoot, 
um, at first I wasn't loving myself because when the woman wanted to take pictures of me, I just dove into the water and said, no, that's okay. And, um, and then they, you know, they kept egging me on, encouraging me. And once I let her instruct me, she was, she's a model herself. Once I let her instruct me, I just went with it and it felt so spontaneous, so freeing. Um, and I realized how much I loved expressing myself in front of a camera or when I was little, a movie camera, as my sister reminded me. So, um, yeah, I just, it, it just felt good. I felt confident once I did it. And then the other thing about authenticity, what I've read recently is that it means your authenticity, it's often assumed that if you're authentic, it means you're not filtering and that's not the case. What it means is you're being thoughtful about it, which is what I did when I posted um, those photos on social media. I wanted to start a conversation around confidence. You know, as you take this journey, right? And you just described sort of where we've been over the past couple of weeks and beautifully talked about you know, what does this mean? You know, what does this mean? How do you become true to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what was it like looking back at the post? Because, you know, when you look back at something, a lot of people don't look back. But if you do look back, you sort of realize something. And can I ask you this question? Because you are also a Myers-Briggs expert. You understand the dichotomies of things, right? Some people you can say, things like, you have to start by loving yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the personalities will take that in and be like, oh, yeah. Others are like, seriously? <laughs> well, now, right. I don't know which is which, but my <laughs> point is, we, have, we see things through different lenses. Yes, absolutely. And, that, and you're talking about the sensing and intuition, the perception <laughs> dichotomy. And people who prefer sensing, like myself, we start with we we start with who we are first how we see things how it affects me first and that's comes across as self-centered and so just knowing that um when i am in a relationship or communicating with somebody who's different than me who's more intuitive um and their big picture it's like okay i have to remind myself to pull myself out of myself and listen to where they're coming from because they look you're intuitive, you're naturally intuitive. Again, we do both. It's just, where do we naturally start? Mm -hmm. and, um, and you're naturally intuitive. You start up here, out above yourself, away from yourself. And the last thing you do is come back to yourself probably, <laughs> right? And so just knowing that instead of using it, you know, sometimes it, when our energy's low, um, when we're trying to have a conversation together, um, not just you and I, but people in general. In general. Yeah. Um, it's like we, we, we start from our own point of view and we don't have the patience to accept and appreciate the other person and listen patiently to the other person's point of view. And so just knowing that, just knowing that about ourselves is when we, that way we can respond um, authentically yeah. by knowing who we are, knowing who the other person is. I love that you led with that quote from uh, Deepak. Um, and I love that you led with the, the part about discovery. Uh, let's, let's take a look at that a little bit closer because I think you said it earlier, authenticity for a lot of people is really misunderstood. Um, and by you doing the comparison between confidence and authenticity, it helps people understand the intersection of them and the integration of them. And so when we discover a true identity, right, is not connected to socially derived identities and the constrictions and limitations that come with, with that, then we attach ourselves and disguise our true unlimited balanced nature. What I love about this is the world we live in today, do you think understanding confidence and authenticity has really moved up on the pole of priorities to learn? Oh, yes, absolutely. Because I, I keep seeing these articles and books. So the article about, um, uh, about being authentic and, and 
filtering and or not filtering. And I also found there's a book um, that just I just came across my my feed today. There's a book that says uh, "Make it, don't fake it." Leading with <laughs> auth leading with authenticity for real business success. <laughs> it's like there it is right there. I mean, it's it's all over the place. So, and, and what I believe in a lot of these, uh, what we're going to be talking about today, authenticity leads to confidence, starting where you're at, who you are at your core, and understanding your, again, understanding yourself, and then being able to understand others, and yeah. asking for help. So just knowing, again, I start with details and in the moment, and if I need to pull myself out and be a big you know, look at things in a big picture way. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to go to my husband. I'm going to go to my sister because you're all big picture and ask for help. And just knowing how to ask for help, asking, knowing ourselves well enough to know what we need and how to ask for, for help, especially from someone who's different than us. What I love about all of this is, and, and let's just kind of take a sneak peek at, at, at what we're going to do moving forward. You know, today, what you're bringing to the forefront is taking a look at confidence in you. And I love that you're breaking this down into various aspects of confidence in you, the you part, right? And so throughout the show today, we're going to talk about, we just, Carrie, just talked about authenticity. But what about things like compassion? What about things like confidence and arrogance? What about things that we don't think about, for example, when we look at confidence and courage. So throughout this show today, you know, this is the journey that Carrie is taking us on. This is what she does with the people she works with. Um, and also this is how we get in touch with the true nature of who we are. You know, I was asked a question, Carrie, and I wanna to go to break. And I was asked a question, I'm actually gonna be doing a show about it tomorrow. Um, we have a great new team. We had a great team before. And so there's this idea of attracting things, right? Mm -hmm. You talked about that in the past couple of shows. When we come back, what is confidence and compassion? And is this statement by me correct? Carrie's gonna answer this when we come back. Is compassion one of the most misunderstood inner emotions? And what does it get confused with. I love this talk. Let's take a short break, everybody. Benny, Jacob, Malia, all of you will be right back. Nailed it radio with Carrie Nail. And I get to take this journey with Carrie. I'm Dr. Pat. Uh, before we go, uh, let's stop for a minute because we're talking about a bunch of things where people are saying, I, I don't know how to do that, Carrie. I, I don't know how to do that. And this show, of course, if you don't know how to do it and you need some help with this, you got to give us a call or go over to Facebook, facebook.com transformation talk radio, type something in, we'll get you an answer. But mostly 1-800-930-2819. Please go ahead and give us a call if you have questions. But more importantly, we're talking about life. And if we're talking about life, here's what you need to do. Ask yourself the question, am I able to take this journey alone or because I use a hand up? Carrie, how do people work with you? Because you're working with people all over the world. You help them understand themselves, but more importantly, you help them understand themselves in moving forward in their lives. How do people work with you? What's the best way to know about that? Well, uh, first of all, you can contact me at Carrie at CarrieNail.com or my website, CarrieNail.com, K-E-R-I-N-A-I-L.com. And as a coach, I meet people where they're at. And, and then we discover who they are at their core. I help them discover themselves, who they are at their core. And then we can look at what situation they're going through and apply that information to what they're going through right now and how and help them i help them move forward with confidence and build that confidence as well and you know part of that is really helping people understand the underpinnings or how should i say in a lot of cases <laughs> undertow 
of a lot of things that go on in our lives. Today, you're looking at four aspects of confidence and some, and some other aspect of who we are. We just finished talking about authenticity. You know, now let's talk about what I think is one of the most difficult things to understand and learn. However, once you get it, you get it for life. That's confidence and compassion, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I want to start off with another quote by Deepak Chopra that says, the divine feminine within each of us naturally radiates harmony and compassion. Once we understand and experience our inner awareness as peace, we naturally express this calming energy to those around us. In returning to our own inner peace, we help the world around us return to peace as well. So again, that inner peace comes from being authentically knowing who we are at our core. And the definition of compassion is kindness, caring, and a willingness to help others. And we also need to do that for ourselves. We need to com be compassionate with ourselves. But how can we be if we don't know who we are, what our gifts are, what our challenges are, what our needs are, and how to express those needs so we can be compassionate with each other? I just recently um, had, uh, there's a, a mom in my building, a woman in my building who is a five year old. and she just made a big discovery about her family and it's, and it's taken all of her energy. And she's like, I just don't have time to think about it, to absorb it. And I said, well, how can you take time for yourself? And we talked about a strategy where perhaps she could have her, her son stay with, you know, her, his grandparents. And she could just, if she wanted to stay in bed watch a show, binge watch a show, and just give herself some time and space to just absorb what's been going on. And we get so, especially people like me who are in the moment, we have a lot of extroverted energy and we like to get things done. Um, we're just, we're always making lists. We're always doing and, and being with people and, and, uh, it, and it, knowing that about ourselves, I know that about me, I know I have to build in space so that I have time to absorb all the wonderful things and all the discoveries that take place every day. You know, when we're talking about these things, um, they have special meaning. I want to talk about compassion for a moment. And I want to talk about that quote that you used by Deepak, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about compassion. And so during the break, you and I were talking, I was telling you a little bit about the fact that there's confusion about compassion. There certainly is confusion about the difference between compassion and empathy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if this is certainly not in your personality wheelhouse, not only is it confusing, but you absolutely don't really care. And yet at the same time, you do. Mm -hmm. um, because when people express it to you, you feel it. See, this is the kind of thing that when we talk about confidence and compassion and you put those two together and then you combine that with authenticity, which we previously talked about, mm -hmm. when you're face to face with someone that fully stands in that level of confidence and compassion and authenticity, when you talk about the photo shoot and the woman that asked if she could take your picture, mm -hmm. there was a moment in that story that you shared a couple of weeks ago. It was as if a page turned and this woman was looking at you through the lens of confidence, compassion, and authenticity. Mm -hmm. Talk about how, when that happens, how, when that divine feminine is Deepak says, in each of us naturally radiates hearty and passion. How does it hit another person's heart? Oh, yes. Uh, just by showing interest. Um, that, and that's what, I think that's what did it for me is she got to know me for me. Because we were talking, I was talking with all, all the other women that were there at the party. And a lot of them were coaches and they coached in different areas. And they wanted to know about my coaching. And then when they found out that I was, had just celebrated my milestone birthday this year. Um, you know, 
I started asking questions. I'm like, gosh, you all, you all seem so confident in going around taking pictures of yourself. And, and, you know, they're about 30 years younger than me. And I said, what well, do you, do you guys have more confidence than women my age? And, and we just kind of started that conversation and what that might look like. And, and so then she started asking me more about my clients, my typical, you know, client is um, between the ages of 45 and 70. It's usually women going through life transitions, helping them build their confidence, who they are, especially after, after being an empty nester, um, you know, if they were a stay-at-home uh, parent, or even if a career at a certain point, you know, we tend to come to our careers going, wow, what do I do now? Or even think <laughs> about retirement, you know, and what am I, who am I? And what am I going to do? So just starting that conversation about generations of confidence and what that looks like, what are the similarities? What are the differences? And so when she came over and, and said, you know, what, I just really, I just really want to do this. And I'm like, you know, I think I do too. And then, but that was it. Like you, it's about building relationships and being interested in each other. And so I think that helps with understanding empathy and also helps us to be compassionate with each other. Um, and there are differences. I mean, there are differences in cultures. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I've talked a lot about my experience in different cultures, especially in the sport I played. But what have you discovered about women in different cultures? Well, when I was living in Singapore, there's a there's a picture of me with two of my friends there. And it was the Chinese New Year. And we all came from ba different backgrounds and cultures. And we are all um, expressing ourselves where we were at, but bringing our cultures into it. And um, and one of the things we realized why we became friends is because our personalities were very similar. We were very open to talking to each other and, and understanding that. And that led to us being open to our differences. Um, one woman is uh, from the Philippines and is has a Christian background. Another woman is from uh, Malaysia and has a Muslim background. I'm from North America with a spirituality background. And um, what we realized is that most people, most cultures, most countries, people want to, when you come down to it, people want to be happy and live, live a happy and compassionate life. And, and that's what I also learned when I was teaching workshops there, is there were so many people. There were um, Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim, Christians, there were Chinese, Indian, um, English, uh, Australian, um, it, you know, all sorts of backgrounds. And when I would bring uh, the understanding of the Myers-Briggs personality preferences, everybody that just cut across it all, everybody looked at their energy and how they see things, how they make decisions. And then once they understood that, then they could see how their cultures and their backgrounds impacted um, impacted who they are. And that's what the beauty of Myers-Briggs is, is understanding why we do what we do. And we need to come to that core. It's like an onion. It's, yeah. it's, an onion is so many layered, it's, it's, it's complex with so many layers. But when we get kind of pull that all back and come to the core, of who we are, our energy, what, what our preferences are, then we can understand, oh, I grew up as a woman in this culture, in this country, in this religion, or I grew up as the middle child in this country, this culture, I was educated this way. And so, and so we, we all have, we all can look like an onion, but our layers are oh. are different and our layers are different. I got to tell you, I mean, we're going to take a short break because when we come back, we're going to continue the conversation about confidence. And this next one is real hot button. It's confidence and arrogance. It's really quite interesting to look at this and get it from Carrie Nail's perspective. But this idea of culture, Carrie, it's just fascinating. I have made so many faux pas, so many, I don't even know 
Benny has known me 18 years. Uh, some of the stuff that comes innocently out of my mouth, really, in misunderstanding cultures is the way I've learned. But the lessons I've gotten is because I'm surrounded by people that are authentic, somewhat compassionate, great sense of humor, but more importantly, teeter-totter on confidence and arrogance. And this is, I think, this next topic, this is where the great learning happens. I'm glad you're talking about it, not me. Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back with Carrie now. Welcome back. This is back. What I love about this, and if you all were listening on the YouTube stream, you were, you were hearing Carrie and I talk about a situation with, I was somewhat embarrassed about, but totally authentic about, and I absolutely knew better. But in a moment, when we are challenged or stressed, or we go to a point of fear, I think, Carrie, everything we're talking about starts to take on different layers, like 50 shades of arrogance or 50 shades. <laughs> We're going to talk about confidence and arrogance right now. But again, please let folks know how they can contact you, work with you. And by the way, also the work that you do with Myers-Briggs translates into groups, organizations, teams, all of that. So yeah. it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. It's really a dynamic nature of understanding. Yes. How do uh, people do that with you? So you can contact me at my uh, email, carrie at carrienail.com or my website, carrienail.com. That's K-E-R-I-N-A-I-L.com. And yeah, so I, like I said, I meet people where they're at, help them understand who they are at their core, and then help them move forward with whatever situation they're in. And helping them understand who they are at their core, I use the Myers-Briggs personality preferences to understand themselves with that. Uh, and what we're talking about today is a segment of a bigger conversation, but we're really the, the, the featured show is confidence, right? It's the main show. And we're talking about these other items, which we reflect to emotionally. And by the way, we can act on or take an action because of, you know, we've talked about confidence and authenticity. We've talked about confidence, and compassion. Now, here's the one that I think everybody gets a little stuck on, mm -hmm. confidence and arrogance. Mm -hmm. Even the word arrogance, just, it, wait, have you ever said that to people? Is this the word arrogance? Have you ever said like, oh, that, you know, that sounds a little arrogant. I mean, you know, like people are like, what? Yeah. I mean, the reaction to the word arrogance. It's, well, it's kind of a harsh sound anyway, a harsh word. And harsh <laughs> it's sound. a harsh word. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about it from your perspective, confidence and arrogance. And I have to tell you, if you compete in sports, Benny and I used to talk about our softball days, right? When you're competing or you're on a team or you're doing anything of a nature where you want to do it well, I don't think anybody has ever watched a top tennis match and have seen the top people and have not gotten a sense of one or the other with a little bit of, hmm, a little bit of arrogance there, right? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Is it arrogance or is it confidence? That's why you're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what is it, what, what do both of those look like? Um, I think there's an image of two women right now. One kind of has her arms crossed with a, with kind of a non-smiling face and the other one's more yeah. open and, and is smiling. That's what it can look like. Um, so one of the, another quote by Deepak Chopra is when our inner nature is not at peace with itself, we find ourselves in self-judgment and struggle. When we're not self-aware, we blame mm -hmm. others for the unhappiness and pain we feel and deny the truth that our suffering arises within ourselves. So that's when arrogance comes out, when we're not self-aware, when we're trying to fake it till we make it, and we're trying to project what we think we should be or who we think we should be, not knowing who, not knowing what our gifts and challenges are. Um, because when we do know those things, then we can be confident in how we express ourselves and how we just are. Um, 
also another thing that can keep us from being confident and go to arrogance is when we have low energy and tend to go on autopilot and um, we're not at our best and we don't have patience. We only have patience for our own point of view. We don't have patience for the other person's point of view. So guess what? We're going to come across pretty, pretty arrogant. It's my way or the highway, baby. <laughs> but if we know, also know that about ourselves, we can go, oh, you know what? I need to walk away. And I'm not going to walk away in anger. I'm going to walk away and say, you know what? I'm just, I just don't have the energy right now. I just need to go walk away for a minute, take a deep breath, maybe walk around the block and come back. If it's something that needs to, if the conversation needs to keep going um, or even so that the person can come back and respond versus react in a low energy way. And perhaps even coming back with the response of, you know what, can we, you know, when's the best energy time for both of us to discuss this situation? And let's figure out a strategy when we can do that. And, and I think that this is one of, if we could talk about this, don't you, don't you think for a minute as we're looking at confidence and arrogance, right? And, you know, let's go through and take a definition of, of this if we could, because when we look at the definition of arrogance and we look at the definition of confidence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There is an, a, an important distinction between the textbook definitions, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But it's really, I think it's a gray area. Tell me what your thoughts are between these two. Okay. So the definition of arrogance is an, exa uh, an exaggeration of one's own worth or importance, often by an overbearing manner and attitude of superiority. The definition of confidence is a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities and qualities. So it's almost like the, the confidence comes from within and the arrogance comes outside. When we look outside of ourselves to, to have a relationship or to have a conversation or to figure out what we're supposed to do, we, again, we have to start with from within and know who we are and know, oh, you know, I, I, um, hmm, I'm just trying to think, um, you know, when I go back to the Myers-Briggs types, um, for instance, the last dichotomy is called judging and perceiving <laughs> and judging doesn't mean you're judgmental, but it does mean that, and I'm judging, naturally prefer ju judging, tend to be closed, want to make decisions quickly and move on, wants right. to come to closure quickly right. and move on. And people who are naturally perceiving, they want to wait to the last minute to make decisions because they want to be open to as many options as possible. And so a great strategy as I mentioned earlier, for, for someone like me who's naturally prefers organization and quick decisions is to create, create the space to be patient with many options so that, um, and, and that's that energy. And, um, and to, you know, I, I kind of make a ladder for myself. Usually a typical J ladder is lots of rungs in my ladder and check off, check off, check off. Great. And if somebody, if something spontaneous happens, it just, it's like a domino effect. And so I create a, a much wider ladder for myself with just maybe three rungs in it so that I can keep all that spontaneous space for someone that wants to talk to me about big picture or open yeah. and many options. And someone who, who um, prefers perceiving a great strategy is to create the time to focus and I because they're all open there's no ladder there's no lines and it's like just put in one rung right yeah. and just just let yourself come to that focus and let's focus on that together I, I was talking about this yesterday in a show with Jeff Rossi as we were talking about the perception of women in power and, you know, in, for those of you that missed that, you can just hear that rant because it really was a rant. And, you know, we talked about arrogance. Um, and it was interesting when I went back and I listened to that show where we were coming from with that. And what I found really interesting, and this is really why your work is so helpful in this, 
is because our conclusion was using a very specific set of examples, right? When you get a senator who is a woman running for president and the focus of the campaign that brings her down, literally brought her down, is the statement that she is extremely tough on her staff. And you think about that and you think about what the perceived value of that is. But then there are those of us that looked at her and said, wow, I have never seen anybody more confident in that role than her. And, and when you see these women who have been in the forefront of our political arena recently, because we haven't had very many, to be honest with you, but they've been out there and you watch them in confidence. I've never seen anybody more confident in a situation in public when Kamala Harris was literally interviewing and questioning during some kind of hearing. But we walked away from there, some of us seeing her as confident. Most people saw her as arrogance. Isn't this really the challenge for us mm -hmm. in how to really show up mm -hmm. in, in these two arenas? Yeah. Yes. And it's, again, I just really believe if we know um, who we are yeah. first and then know where other people are coming from and understanding what those dichotomies are so that we, we can come across confidently because we do know ourselves and then be open to someone else's ideas or opinions or options that are different than ours yeah and and finding the similarities to come together with that right now everything we've talked about is going to lead to this i i think you know i i think what i'd like to do carrie is uh skip the break because i want to roll into this next part and i want to make sure there's plenty of time to talk about it confidence and courage. Mm -hmm. So we talked about confidence and authenticity, confidence, compassion, confidence and arrogance. Here we go. Now, is this the cleanup batter, confidence and courage? <laughs> the cleanup batter? <laughs> yeah, you know, cleanup batter is when you put up that fourth batter mm -hmm. in baseball, sorry mm -hmm. for the baseball analogy, Benny has to help me here. You put your best batter up, mm -hmm. bases loaded. You, pick, you go to your bullpen and you pick that person that has not a great batting average, but every shot he or she hits is out of the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that what courage is about? Yeah. Well, and a lot of these all to lead us to confidence. Authenticity mm -hmm. leads us to confidence. Um, uh, compassion leads us to confidence. Knowing whether we're confident or or being arrogant, which is not knowing ourselves, again, leads us to confidence. And again, courage, courage gets us there too. So one of the quotes uh, that I brought up on this one is from a book I'm reading, Got to Go by Lee Reich, which she's on a motorcycle traveling around the world by herself. And she says, acting with courage doesn't mean not being afraid of something, but daring to do it anyway. And so courage to me is, um, like myself and my friend who um, who was in one of the pictures before, um, moving from country, for me, it was state to state and country to country. And uh, for her, it was moving from country to country and being brought up with uh, already, she was brought up with two different languages from the Philippines, Tagalog and English, and then going to Singapore. And, and so having the courage to move, right? But then, thrive. So confidence. So courage gets us there. And then confidence. Um, we, we thrive with confidence. It's using that courage to thrive. Um, so courage definition, mental or moral strength to venture, persevere and withstand danger, fear or difficulty. Um, and so when we do take the courage and and take risks and see positive results, that leads to, to confidence. Um, so yeah, so again, I was looking back at, at 
what people said on the, the confidence conversation I posted with those swimsuit pictures. And she said, yeah, she goes, I'm a mom far away from her comfort zones, from her family, from her friends in the Philippines and Singapore. Now she's married to a Frenchman living in France, having to learn the language there to communicate um, with his family and friends. And now she has two little boys that she's teaching to be multilingual. And she often asks herself, am I good enough to my husband? Am I good enough to his family? Am I good enough to our friends, my kids? What are the impressions of young and older friends mm -hmm. about me? And she says, at the end of the day, looking at her kids, she says, what do I care? They love me and I love them more than life itself. That's mm -hmm. her confidence right there. So she took all that courage of moving around, learning new languages, and now she's thriving as a mom. And you know, I love this and this conversation about this and the stories you're sharing, because I wanna get back to the quote by Leah, acting with courage doesn't mean not being afraid of something, but daring to do it anyway. Uh -huh. um, what if we could live our life like that? I, yes, I mean, I, I do it. I done it. Um, so just the similar situation, I've moved all around the United States, then Canada, then Singapore. And what I took with me was this knowledge, this Myers-Briggs personality preference knowledge. I got certified in three different countries, wow. US, Canada, and Singapore. I took, so I had the courage to move with my family and to experience all these different experiences, but then to use my knowledge to, and saw the opportunities, oh, this place has Myers-Briggs office. I'm gonna go knock on their, I did that in Singapore. <laughs> I went knocking on their door. <laughs> They're like, how did you get up here? <laughs> and, you know, I said, I, and, you know, I just, I just love this stuff. And I'm from all these different countries and I see it cut across all these different nationalities and cultures. So I've been, I got certified in everything they have um, from each country and, and, um, and, and I use it, I use it in my everyday life, not only in my coaching, but I've taught workshops to help people communicate better team building, um, you know, and, and we, as people are going back to work, right? Yes. Um, introverts, people who prefer natural inward introverted energy yep. are struggling with wanting to go back in a work environment. And so yeah. managers and leaders are, are asking questions. How can, how can we make this work? And let's, let's, see what everybody needs. And so that's why I recommend to, to leaders, I'll say, well, let's put a type table together and understand where everybody's preferences are and create, because they're trying to create these hybrid models. What do introverts need? What do extroverts need? Yeah. Introverts need time. They need quiet time. They need time alone. Extroverts need to be communicating and be around people. So how can we create that environment? Um, the same thing with intuition and, and sensing, um, you know, seeing the big picture versus the details um, and logic, people who are naturally logical thinking and people who are naturally feeling more people oriented, um, how thinking types can, when they're communicating with feeling types, how they can uh, learn to listen with empathy. <laughs> it's that patience thing, right? And yeah. for people who are feeling like me, we're all about, it's all personal, <laughs> all emotional. <laughs> all the time. And to compose ourselves, to know what we need to do for ourselves to, so that we can be direct when we're communicating with a logical person. So just understanding all of that about ourselves and how we work, how we live. Do we like to be structured? Do we like to be open-ended? So creating that type table to see what everybody needs. And then, okay, now how can we work better together in this new environment? So it's a great way to reset yeah. as we go into these new work environments. You know, let me just ask you about this. We have a couple of minutes left. And I think this is a great way to kind of roll this forward. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine and he had, of course, he they had done the Myers-Briggs. Um, his corporation did, does all of that. 
what he did was something very interesting. And, and this is really kind of where I want to go to ask you for your final message. His comment to me was this. He said, the people that I thought would do really, really well in the work at home environment didn't do as well as I thought. He said, the other people that we hardly hear from a peep from in board meetings, in conference rooms, in team meetings, you almost don't know they're there. He said, we've never seen a level of production, anything like this before. Because we were having this conversation. I was telling him what you were going to talk about today. And I told him he should call you because they're trying to determine what happened. Now, you know, and I know what I just described are a couple of introverted people. I don't know enough about them. They thrived in the home environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unobstructed, uninterrupted. I don't have to talk at a meeting. The, he mm -hmm. said their pro productivity level, accuracy and creativity increased, in his opinion, 300%. Mm -hmm. And they are clueless on how to come back yeah. to the office. Yeah, and it's, and it's it's the example I use in all uh, business situations when I'm doing workshops is make sure if it's a brainstorming meeting, make sure everybody gets the information ahead of time because people who naturally prefer introverted energy need to read it and absorb it internally, sleep on it, have time to process it, and also let the be prepared to speak out loud because people who prefer introverted energy prefer to communicate in writing. <laughs> and so that way they're prepared and, and then everybody's prepared. Everybody has, some people just wing it, right? And extrovert, <laughs> I'm just gonna, you know, talk as, speak as I think, right? But the introverts will be prepared to know that they need to speak up and so just having that information ahead of time and giving them the time to process it is so helpful. You know, we have four producers now and Jessica and I were talking about this this morning and I would love to hear your personal message as well and share your information. The old ways of thinking how to do things different. So today I'm managing different than I've ever done before. I'm doing things at a detail level I've never done before. Mm. I sent out three emails this morning. Jacob will tell you she must be on steroids. But in the end, I've listened to everything you've said in the time we've been on here. And what I'm trying to do is make adjustments so that we approach this as not a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. The other thing we all have to realize is we're working with people they don't just want us to send them emails. They want to know, can I get my email on my phone? Mm -hmm. Adapt, adaptogen. Yeah. Thank you for today. What's your final message, Carrie? Thank you so much. Powerful conversation. And not only that, these are the things we need to know and learn. How, what do you want to leave us with today? And thank you so much. No, oh, thank you. Uh, now I have a quote from Alicia Keys. It says, when I've met my full self, it's when I'm the most honest with myself. It's when I can actually feel comfortable enough to say, this is where I am today, right now, this is how I feel. And that's what I do. I meet clients where they're at today and help them move forward with confidence. And you can reach me at carrynail.com or my website, carrynail. Yeah, carrynail.com or my email, carrie at carrynail.com. Thank you so much. And I want to say to everybody, Carrie is just touching the surface of this. Mm -hmm. When you work with her, she will help you understand the dynamic nature of who you are, who you want to become. But more importantly, in the world we're living in today, I know a lot of us need some help. We need some help to be able to move forward in our lives, regardless of where you think you are. We don't even know what we don't know about this time in our lives. Short break, everybody. We'll be right back. You've nailed it. Thank you for listening to Nailed It Radio. Find your simplicity within your complexity with me, life coach, Carrie Nail, and my co-host, Dr. Pat, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. I'm at my best when I'm helping others be their best. 
Tune in next time for more tips and stories on what it means to become whole and integrate into your true self. To subscribe to this show and get more information about how I can help you be your best, visit carrynail.com. Thank you.